Yep, it's just about that time of year. I don't know if this cloudy part of the everybody how we doing I tell you what I don't know how he has the energy to go around and play in this heat that all you Texas people gave us Nebraska we're not supposed to well we do have this stuff we just don't like it when we get it but I can't complain I know you've been suffering this for a long time down down south and we had about a week of heat index over 100 then it cooled off, and now we're back to another week of heat indexes over 100. So the girls looking for shade. Of course, they got all the shade up under the shed, but, you know, they don't go lay back there. And him? Ah, oh, he's fine. Let's just go out here at 100 degrees and run all over the yard and play. Yeah, that's what you do. For now. Oops, excuse me. Sorry about the sun. But uh, when the camera's off, we go in the house. He lays in front of the air conditioner, so <laughs> he shows off for you now, but he'll go into the air conditioning later. All right, I'll tell you, it's hot, it's August. Who would think breeding season? But we have to talk about breeding season and getting ready for that. What we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna give you a couple ideas, let you know what I do, I'm not saying what I do is right, it's just telling you this is what I do. Uh, my first thing I'm going to do, and I'm gonna start here in about a week. And I wanna show you here is the package. This is called DuraFirm. Hang on, I'm gonna hang you up here while we're doing this. This is a mineral designed for sheep called DuraFirm. It's a concept mineral. Conception, not concept, conception mineral. It's designed to help with conception in breeding season. Does it work? Is it worth it? I don't know. My daughter's used it with her goats. It comes in a bag of mineral like that, as you saw in the picture. It also comes in a tub. And I think she's used the mineral this last year. She used the tub, doing that with her goats. Uh, I've used the mineral, and that's probably, I got part of a bag left. That's what I'll continue. So does it really help with conception rate? Does it really work for that or do anything? I don't know, but the only thing I can give you is this. Uh, what, two years ago or three years ago, uh, I had one set of triplets. And I did not give any DuraFirm at that time. Now, the next year, I started DuraFirm the next year, but I didn't start DuraFirm until the day I got into the late. So I put the rams in about mid-October, and I started feeding them DuraFirm just about the time I put the rams in, which is really too late. Uh, I ended up with one set of triplets. Last year, I was going to put the rams in mid-October. I started with the DuraFirm uh, on September 1, a full six weeks before I put in the rams. And by this, what I'm saying is, on my ewes, I give them a coffee can of uh, grain. I just took a small scoop. I put a little over the top and top dress it and give the, so every day, they're getting a little DuraFirm in their grain every day. That's the way I was doing it. So last year, or this spring, how many triplets did I get? Three sets. We went from one and one to feeding it properly, going to three. Did the DuraFirm make that difference? I don't know, can't tell you. What I can tell you is the one that had triplets had triplets before. The other two had never had triplets before. So it was their first time ever having triplets. That's all I can tell you. Again, I go by my experience, what happened to me, that's it with that. So take a look at it. I'm sure you'll find someplace locally if it interests you. There might even be other brands that'll do things similar to the DuraFirm I don't know about, but uh, I want to tell you about that anyway because that's the first thing I do and I'll be starting that next week. So, all right, let me get you back off fence. Ah, you found a shady spot, huh? Yeah, wore yourself out. All right, next thing. 
what do we do after that? I will, I think I'm going to stick with, I think I'm going to stick with about October 15th for the day to put in my rams. That gave me lambs last year, right around the, uh, the 7th, 8th, I'd have to go back and look, 7th, 8th of March, something like that. I've got some new pins I'm going to put inside for lambing pins. I'm going to get some stuff my daughter hasn't used that she bought, didn't use. So I'll be going up to get that when it's cooler and uh, getting that set aside. So when I do that, I'll show you that when I get it. But the other thing we want to do, and I'll do this about two weeks prior to putting the rams in, and you hear people talk about flushing. Uh, with sheep and goats, flush them. And basically what we're discussing there is upping the nutrition. We're gonna increase the nutrition level. Right now, 11 ewes in here, we've got a three pound coffee can and they're getting about half of it. That's all they're getting for grain. So what I will do at that point in time, when I get to October 1, I will now increase that grain. I may double that grain. I may take it a few days, up it over three or four or five days, but I'm gonna up the grain up the level, of course, they'll be getting their uh, uh, Duraferm the whole time, but I'll double the grain. Right now, as you can see, they're still out in pasture. They're getting some grass hay. I put some grass hay in for everybody to go along with it. You can see they're not really eating at all because they're out in the pasture. By the time we get to this point, I think what I'm gonna do and use in this point then is I'm gonna start taking and having Two hay feeders. I'll have this one I got right here now. I'll still have this for the ewes. As long as I don't have rams, I use this. I quit using this when I get the rams in there because you can get horns hooked and stuff. But I have my trough feeders. So, matter of fact, let's go over here. Try to keep you out of the sun. My other feeders that I use for full time or rams and all the time is right here. This would be one of your tractor supply. These are one of your feeders that usually sit up on the uh, aluminum frame, so they sit off the ground. I take mine off the aluminum frame. I put it on some pressure treated wood instead, so it sits off the ground. But I want, usually it's for the use, but lambs will jump right inside there. I want to let the lambs be able to get to the feed, so I take them off. But I use that when I've got rams. Now they're gonna get in it and they're gonna mess it up some, but you're gonna go with that. So. In order to flush, what I will do, start doing in October then, for at least two weeks for a breed, I'll set in a second feeder, which I hay feeder have. I'll start giving them a little alfalfa in the morning. I'll give them just a little bit of alfalfa in that feeder in the morning. I'll feed them grain in the evening, and then I'll give them grass hay in this feeder in the evening. Uh, that way they're getting hay twice a day. They still may be pasture out there. If it is, that's fine. But I want to give them a little alfalfa and a little grass, we all know they love the alfalfa, so they're gonna be more apt to eat that. Now, the next thing I'm thinking of doing, and I'll show you this when we get to it. I got my grass bales right over here. I got my other grass bales in the barn. We're gonna have that time that I'm also getting alfalfa. I got the alfalfa bales coming. I have most of one left in the barn over here. I think I've got five more ordered brown bales. But you gotta make that transition from grass to alfalfa when you're making change. I don't want to just stop feeding the grass one day and start feeding alfalfa. So what I'm going to do this year, I thought about building another building area here, doing something, but I'm not going to get to it. So what I'm going to do is I have my grass here. When that's done, I'll replace that with an alfalfa bale, as long as I have my alfalfa bales by then, and I should. I think he's probably got them baled by now, so I should be getting them any time. So I'll put an alfalfa bale in here, and what I'm gonna do is put a grass bale right here. I flip it over up on, on a pallet so it's off the ground and I can attach like a tarp up here to put over it to keep the snow and the rain off it. What that's gonna allow me to do, I can pull alfalfa off that, throw it in the feeder in the morning. I can take alfalfa from the barn, put it in their feeder in the morning. Then in the afternoon, I can take grass from here, give it to them, give it to them. And that way they're getting some of each. Eventually, We'll quit feeding the grass. We'll just give them straight alfalfa. I have two more bales of grass in there. One of them will sit out here. And when that one's gone, when that one's gone, by that time we'll probably go strictly alfalfa. And that leaves me one grass bale back in there yet. And I'll probably try to save that for next spring. So give that to them next spring. 
So that's what I'm going to do. Get ready for breeding. I'm going to start them on Durafern here next week. We'll start giving the mineral every day. Then the 1st of October, I will flush them two weeks before breeding. Give them as much nutrition as I can and have them in good shape. Now, some people are also going to talk about the rams. You've got to keep, make sure the rams are in good condition because uh, they're going to be stressed. They're going to be doing a lot of breeding and running around and chasing ewes. So that wears them down. So you have to be careful with that. And I agree with that. One thing you have to understand, I'm doing 11 ewes. So one ram's going to have five, one's going to have six. They don't have much to chase. Odds are they'll probably breed one or two at least or three in the first four, five, six days we're in the pen. Half of them may be bred within, within just a few days. So they're not going to do, in my case, they're not going to do a lot of chasing. If I'm putting one ram in with 15 or 20 ewes, that's a whole different story. He's going to spend a lot of time running around chasing and fixing. Don't get me wrong, they chase them when there's only four or five, but it's not like there's 15 or 20. So I'm not quite as concerned on nutrition as the rams as I would be if my rams were going in with 20 or 25 views or something like that. So, but yes, you want to keep the nutrition up there. Hey buddy, how we doing? You wander out? Everybody's in the shade. Looks like he wandered out to, for something. Not sure why, it's too hot for that. All right. All I got this week, just wanted to talk about breeding, getting ready for fall. It's already that time. Hey, might have something next week. If not, I will see you back in a couple weeks.